for the finals, and as the drama unfolds, we're going to start off with the 106 Baltimore County Championships. It's going to be Jake Rendleman from Owings Mills and Doug Ramirez from Eastern Tech. An extremely exciting match we have here. Uh, Jake Rendleman with an exciting record of 28 and 1. Doug Ramirez with a record of 21 and 4. Doug being the the three seed. Jake Rendleman coming out of Owings Mills. Uh, Ramirez coming out of Eastern Tech, both excellent referees. This first round, they've already started out very, very physical. With Ramirez in on the shot, but Rendleman trying to block it down. And Rendleman has an arm in and gets oh. Ramirez on his back with a minute and 30 seconds in the first period. It's going to be two points for Rendleman. A four-point move. Wow, what Rendleman a great to start to this first round. And set the tone for this match. Ramirez on bottom now. Rendleman going on top with a minute and 29 seconds. The score is 4-0 to zero already. Rendleman, a notoriously good wrestler from Owens Mills, has always, always impressed people uh, every year he's been in this program. Ramirez has climbed from the third seed and now has a chance to be the Baltimore County Rendleman champion. in trouble now. Ramirez with a great reversal as Rendleman got a little too high there, but Rendleman got out for the one point. The score is now 5-2. to two. A good answer back by Ramirez from Eastern Tech to, to sort of say, I'm still in this match and I'm not going to give up yet. Rendleman does take down Ramirez now for a two-point move here. So now we have 7-2 advantage to Rendleman. Both out of bounds with 45 seconds left in the, in the first period. The so we're going to take it back to the middle and regroup, and we're going to start again with 45 seconds. Rendleman trying to break down Ramirez. Ramirez looking to escape, looking to, to get up. But unfortunately is falling into a tilt, but now is on his back. Rendleman looking for that cradle, looking to, to get the head the arm together and gets the cradle and has Ramirez on his back and pins. And that's the end of Doug that one. Doug Ramirez from Eastern Tech with 23 seconds left in first period. Absolutely And Jake Rendleman is our Baltimore County champion yes, for the 106 weight class. Great match. A great, great performance by Rendleman just to come out and dominate. Totally explosive from the beginning, from round one. All right, next we're going to have the 113 weight class, and we're going to have Anthony Genko from Hereford and Brandon Becker from Owings Mills. Genko with a 27-2 and record in the regular season, and Becker with a 22-9. and Both great wrestlers from great programs. And let's see how this uh, match unfolds here. Another Owings Mills wrestler. Clearly, Owings Mills Genko went on the shot. has many, many dominating wrestlers in this tournament. Becker already taken down by Genko. And Genko lets him up, interestingly enough. Lets him up. And for that one point, the score is now 2 1 with a minute 40 left. Hereford, though, is actually leading as a team, leading the Baltimore County Championships with a score of 177.5. But Owings Mills is not far behind with a score of 171. This match could be big points for either team. Oh, it never surprised me to see those two teams on top here. Both great wrestling programs. Great athletic programs as a whole. The score is now 4-1, to one, minute 17 left. Ganko takes neutral. And we see he might be having some trouble uh, working, working uh, Becker on top here. Ganko does have the 4-2 advantage the shot right and now. Has Ganko's leg deep in, but is having a hard time getting his head up as Genko grabs on to his right leg and just completely takes out all of Becker's balance. That's Genko a trying to work something here Genko. and has his arm. As Genko pushes Becker out of bounds with 43 seconds okay. left. The score is now 6-2. to two. Genko, Genko has the lead. And again, Ganko takes neutral. I wonder what is going on here with his uh, ability to control to control Becker on top. It looks like he's doing a pretty good job of controlling Becker. I, I wonder why he's taking neutral. Well, if he knows he can get these points coming out of the neutral position, it may be worth right. the one point that he gives up. You're right, you're right. He, he is absolutely dominating on top and uh, on neutral. And then he drives him back out of bounds. 
after he gets two more points in that round, he has now has an 8-3 advantage over Becker. We're definitely going to see a high scoring, a high scoring match on Hereford's part here. Genko breaking down Becker. Trying to get that control over top of him right now. And Becker almost able to escape as Genko grabs that left leg, trying to get yep, that takedown. Then take we down. drive him out of bounds. We're going to come back to the middle and regroup. We got about two seconds left in this first round. You see how important these matches are. You see two refs out on these mats to make sure that the other ref does not make a mistake. Just show, goes to show you how important this final round of the Baltimore County Championship is. All right, that's the end of our first round. We have Genko with the 8-3 advantage over Becker. Top of the second round, let's see if Becker can turn it around and get some more points. And again, Genko takes neutral, giving that one point to Becker. But also, again, gets that shot and that takedown. And, now, and it, it's now not surprising to me that he keeps taking neutral. He, he's very, very effective standing up. Now looking for hand control. With two more points, Genko now has the lead, 10 to 4. Finds it and rolls that arm under. I mean, three of those points are just from him giving up that positioning. It would really be like 10-1 right now. Yes, yes. Genko is clearly dominating this match. And then... Becker reaches around, grabs the left leg of Genko, trying to do something to get out from under Genko here. And as Genko pushes Becker out of bounds, I will not be surprised to see Genko take neutral here. And he does. He does take neutral. Leaving the score at 10-5 in the middle of the second round. One minute and three seconds left. As we see Becker here getting low, trying to work some sort of shot, trying to change the momentum here. Genko just looks cool, calm, and collected. Oh my, we see a great headlock from, from Becker. What a way to turn this wow. match around. Absolutely What a change is that momentum. But Genko is able to flip over and go out of bounds. What an excellent change in momentum, causing, uh, getting more points. And now it's a three point difference between Becker and Genko. I mean, this match isn't over yet. I mean, these boys have worked all season for this moment right here. And they're not just going to give it up that easy. And look at that. Becker is just trying as hard as he can to get Genko on his back. Two to more get all points, those points for Genko. As, Be as Genko spins around and gets control. 20 seconds left in the second period. Score is, still, score is now 12 to 7. We see Genko trying to work that tra cradle, trying to get that, trying to push the head and the leg together. We're winding down the second quarter with not too much Two movement. seconds left. And that's the conclusion of the second quarter. We have about we have a 12-7 advantage for Genko. This is the 113-pound weight class, and at this weight class, you see a lot of shots taken. A lot of these guys are quick on their feet, move around. You know, it, it, it was very surprising for me to see that you know Becker was able to, to to work the head toss with ease. That's usually a move that you see up in the bigger weight classes. You know, but with experienced wrestlers like this, that they 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 know so many tricks up their sleeve. Becker started the third round on bottom, but quickly gained that control on the top of Becker. Get good now. Spins around, gets control of Becker. And now ensues a 14-7 lead in the third period. This is one of those high-scoring matches we've seen all day. They're just going back and forth with different moves And now Genko does get that cradle, but, but slips out of it. And Becker escapes on... Becker escapes, able to get to his feet. And, and one point one for uh, Becker, yeah. Still trying to work something here. We see him getting real low. We have a six point difference right now, so not impossible for Becker to come back and take control of this match. Becker needs to do something to stop that almost unstoppable shot by Genko. 
every time Genko has gone for that shot, he's gotten two points or more. You know, he's got to do something to sprawl back. He's, he's got to work for that hit toss again, like I said. All right, we have less than a minute left, and it's a 16-8 advantage for Genko. As time ticks down, it's looking less and less likely that Becker's going to make a comeback here. Now Becker needs to do something to get Genko on his back like he did before in the second period. He must pin Genko to win. There is no possibility. Or I, I don't want to say that. There's almost no possibility of him winning by points here. He must get out on bottom and must get Genko on his back. And he does. He does get out on bottom. 38 seconds left in the third period. Genko's not going to let this one, though. Seven-point deficit. Driven. Driven out, out of bounds. bounds. With 26 seconds left. The score is now 16 to 9. Whistle blows. 25 seconds left. Becker cannot sit here and, and, you know, and wait. He must go attack Genko if he, if he plans on winning the county championship. He has about 15 here. seconds left to make his move. And again, Genko takes a shot. And things are looking very dismal for Becker here as the match comes to an end. Five seconds left. The score is now 18 and 9. And, uh, and it looks like we have a new county championship extremely for dominating the 113 weight class. Extremely dominating performance by, by Genko. Just took the shot, uh, completed every single shot. Dude, I don't think he had one failed shot attempt there. And, and just what, what, what demonstration of skills there. So Anthony Genko from Hereford is our 113 Baltimore County Championship. Next up, we have the 120 weight class with Isaiah Mack from Owings Mills and Randy Watson from Sparrows Point. Isaiah Mack with a 19 and I, uh, 19 and 9 um, record in the regular season and is actually the five seed. And uh, Randy Watson with a 25 and 3 record with the, and is the three seed. So we see that Isaiah Mack is the underdog here. I mean, all three matches we've seen so far have had a, like an Owings Mills wrestler in them. It just shows how strong Owings Mills wrestling program really is. Mack and Watson both both looking for hand control here, both trying to look something, both trying to feel each other's style of wrestling out. Oh, and we see Watson take a shot, trying to take another shot, a great reshot by Watson as he picks up Mack high in the air and slams him down. And we see that one hurt. That one definitely hurt Watson. That one definitely hurt Mack. And injury time is going to be taken here by Owens Mills. As he, we can see how hyped up Mac is. And he rushes he's off mad. that trainer and he wants to get started right here again. We have a two point advantage for Watson from Sparrow's Point. And we have about a minute and 20 seconds left in the first period. Mac attempts to get up, but Watson flips him over his, his back and, and gets him back into position. Watson has taken early control of this match. We can see Watson has that that arm of Mac, and every time Mac has tried to get up, Watson is just smacked. Uh, Mac right back into the mat and just, just taking complete troll, control of this match here. Mac. With about 30 seconds left in this first period, score. Watson has an early score of 2-0. Not much going on here, both trying to work for control. Mac still on bottom. As we can see, Watson almost able to get Mac on his back when Mac tried to flip out uh, of the bottom control position here. Watson has early control, but Mac refuses to give up this match. And as the first period comes to a close, we have a score of 2-0. Watson definitely looking like the dominant wrestler in this wrestling match here. We're going to start the second period with Mac taking bottom. Hook the leg, hook the 
and not much explosiveness by Mac here. And I think Watson will take advantage of that, but no. Oh, oh we see Mac trying to get that headlock from Watson. But Watson doesn't allow it and gets right back behind Mac. And the ground and pound starts again. Oh, and we see Mac trying to look for that cradle. Still just trying to keep breakdown Max's position, not allowing him to get up, working those arms, working the knees, and, and you can see the endurance of Watson here just still working that. This match is extremely physical and a lot less explosive than the other matches that we've seen today. It's a lot more about who's going to be getting control and position over the opponent. And right now, it looks like Watson is maintaining that control. With a minute and 14 seconds left in the second period, and Watson will maintain his 2-0 lead over Mac. Mac has yet been able to, to maintain any sort of position. He has been break, he's been broken down on bottom. He, every time he stands up, Watson just slams him down again, and, and he's Watson is, you know, just completely dominated here in this match. In this match, for the 120 weight class, we have Isaiah Mack from Owings Mills and Randy Watson from Sparrows Point. Randy Watson has taken early dominance over this match with a 2-0 lead. Mack still on bottom. Not able to do much here as Watson continues to break down the arms of Mack. 28 seconds left. Not a very high-scoring match, but it is very clear that Watson has had total dominance the whole entire time. This one will definitely end up going down to the third period. 13 seconds left in the second period. School remains at 2-0. Mack still on bottom, unable to work anything, unable to get on top, unable to, to sit out, un unable to get, get on his feet. All right, the end of the second quarter, the score is still 2-0 with Watson from Sparrows Point with the advantage. Because of a forfeit on Ben Montagne's part. And Watson pushes Mac out of bounds. And you can see the frustration in Mac's face as he is hungry for a takedown here in the third period. And it's getting a little chippy out there. The score is now 3-0. Watson still having the advantage with about a minute and 38 seconds left in the third period. And I don't see this one being won by pin in, on either uh, of parties here. I see this, I see Watson winning this match because of the absolute dominance he has had and gets to as he takes down Mac. It is now 5 0 with about a minute and 15 seconds left in the third period. And you can tell Mac is just devastated. If Mac wants any hope of winning this match, he's going to have to turn things around fast and get some quick points. Oh, and we see. You see a Granby roll by Mac and hit his first, first escape. His first point and his first escape. But he still must watch for that shot that Watson has taken and that takedown that Watson has taken. And the sheer strength that Watson has shown is just dominating Mac. Error on the uh, time there. Forgot to start the time there. Both trying to work position as Mac pushes Watson out of bounds with 30 seconds. They're going to correct the clock, taking it from oh, 37 sorry. seconds down to 32. 32. Yes. And with 32 seconds left, we have a 5 1 advantage in Randy Watson's favor. And Randy is almost taking down Watt. Oh. 
did not was Watson was unable to take down Mac there. It was very, very close in getting those two points, getting behind, picking up Mac and getting control for those two points. The third period is now coming to a close. 15 seconds left. The score remains at 5-1 to one here. And I think both these vessels are just going to ride out this match. Actually, I stand corrected. Watson still pushing to get more points. As he once again, as he once again takes down Mac. And we have a county championship for the 120 pound weight class. Congratulations to Randy Watson from Ferris Point to cap off this county championship with a win. He is the 120 pound county championship. What a great performance by, by him tonight. Next up on the map, we have the 126 weight class championship with Alfred Martinez from Dundalk and Nick Montagne from Euro and Franklin. And now Nick Montagna is a three-year varsity wrestler. He, he is the only Franklin wrestler to be, to be uh, represented in the county finals. Um, great wrestler every year. Puts on a great performance. A record of 21-7. and seven. Um, Here we see them both starting now, fighting for hand control. Nick. Alfred Martinez being the one seed has a record of 29-2. and two. But here we see Nick getting the single leg and may get the first takedown of the match. Grabbing that left leg of Martinez. This match is looking to be a lot more explosive than the last match we watched. As Nick pushes Martinez out, he has, he has shown explosiveness to start up this match and almost got those two points to start out. Martinez won his last match Martinez to get here shot. from decision in a 10-3 decision, and Nick won his last match to get here in a fall. Martinez took a massive shot and has Nick Montani in a dangerous position as he picked him up and, and Nick was in between his legs. And Nick now takes a shot, but Martinez is able to shrug it off as Nick gets taken down by a good hip toss by Martinez to counter that shot that Nick threw. And now Nick is on the bottom with 57 seconds left in the first period and escapes quickly to get that one point. So the score is now two to one for this 126 pound weight class match. Both of these wrestlers right now are looking to get control and earn some points before this first period comes to an end. Martinez showing great explosiveness here. Um, great, a great display of strength, able to, to shrug off any uh, any of Ben Monta Nick Montana. I'm sorry, Nick Montana's defenses, and trying to get in there and get the shot. <laughs> Both wrestlers already look winded from how hard they've been working in this past a minute and 40 seconds. Both looking for hand control here. Both looking for control. Trying to get some quick points in the last uh, 13 seconds of this first period. And Nick almost gets a head, uh, headlock throw there, but gets countered by Martinez, and Martinez ends up getting control and two points here in this match. Scores. Nick Montagna, 126 pounds. Nick Montagna on bottom now, trying to sit out and get a point before this period ends. All right, and at the end of the to. first period, there's a 4-1 advantage for Martinez from Dundalk. We got to see if Nick can turn it around here in the second period and get some points. Nick Montagna takes bottom here. Great decision by him. He's excellent on bottom, and like I said, he immediately escapes Martinez for one point, a minute and 50 seconds left. The score is now four to two. Both looking for control here, both looking to, to work a move. Martinez has a two point advantage so far, but it could go either way. Martinez looking to work something here, but Ben counters with wizard by wizarding. And tries to throw Martinez, but both are unable to get anything out of it as Nick goes down, takes a shot, but goes and out of, out of bounds. bounds. Yes. 
Here we go again. A minute and 15 seconds left in the second period. The score is still 4-2. to two. As Martinez takes a shot, but Nick Montana sprawls away and both end back on the feet. With less than a minute remaining in the second period, Martinez has a 4-2 lead over Montagne from Franklin. Both trying to work something here. And Nick almost gets caught. Oh, does get caught in his own in his own takedown. In, Two in more his own points attempt at a takedown. Martinez. Score is now 6-2 with 44 seconds left in the second period. Nick's still on bottom here as he tries to escape from Martinez. Almost does, but at the last second, Martinez grabs the leg of Nick Montani and takes him down again. Still on bottom here with 24 seconds left. Nick escapes Martinez for one point. The score is now six to four. I'm sorry, six to three. And Nick Montana gets a deep shot in on Martinez and is unable to finish, unfortunately. Unfortunately, he drove him out of bounds before he got the takedown. Nick Montana, 126 pounds. But this period ends. And at the end of the second period, the score is now 6 to 3. Very, very physical match we have here. Martinez has had dominance the whole entire match. Let's see if in this third period, Montagna can turn it around. Martinez takes a shot. Point. Nick trying to push Martinez's head down and does, but he must get that leg out before Martinez gets it, sucks it up, and gets that takedown. Still trying to work away from that shot, but the, the, the strength of Martinez will not let Nick Montagna get away from him. And now the ref called a sailmate. Which means they're both now back on neutral. With a minute and 26 seconds left, at the score six to three, they're both trying to work control here. We see Nick take a shot and has it deep and must take. finish if he wants to, to win this match here. But is unable to finish. And, and Martinez counter, counters with a low single leg, ends up wrapping around the other leg, and Nick is in trouble here. Both in a stalemate position here. As Martinez is stuck in between Nick Montagna's legs, Mon Montagna must hold on and does get the stalemate, so they both end back up on neutral. All right, with 43 seconds left, Martinez is winning this match 6-3. to three. If Mart Montagna wants to win, he needs to get a move and get some points here. He must here. get a takedown, yes. Both working, 35 seconds left. Score is 6-3. In order for if Nick wants to win this match, he must get a takedown here. Gotta turn the momentum of this match around and get it going in his favor. As you can see, the Franklin coach, Mike Slaughter, is yelling at Nick. You need to shoot, you need to shoot, and he does. There's 14 seconds left. Nick does not have time to, to dance around with Martinez here. With three seconds left, Martinez has won the Baltimore County Championship by six to three. But an absolutely sensational round by both wrestlers, an extremely physical match, but a great performance by Martinez and, and another win for, and a great win for Delaney. Oh, I'm sorry, and a great win for Dundalk. Alfred Preston. Martinez from Dundalk just won the 126 weight class for the Baltimore County Championships. Okay, the next match we have up is the 132 weight class. It's going to be Tejan Anthony from Western Tech against DJ Grindle from Perry Hall.
Anthony and Grindle, both the one and two seed. Anthony being the first seed, Grindle being the second seed. Anthony from Western Tech with, with a great record of 26 and four. Same, and Grindle, another awesome record with also 26 and four. Both great wrestlers. I expect an extremely physical close match here. Anthony won his last match in a fall against Franklin Holden Taylor, and DJ Grindle won his last match to get to here um, in a decision, a 7-3 to three decision against Kevin Wheeler from Hereford. Anthony in the black singlet. We see him get the takedown, the two points, gets control, gets behind of Grindle. And then he's able to get a great tilt on Grindle, but doesn't get any points out of it, unfortunately. And then a potentially dangerous fall by the ref, so they both start out in the middle with Grindle going down. Anthony has the 2-0 advantage right now with about a minute left in our first period. We see Anthony getting great control of Grindle here. Has his arm caught. Let's see if he can flip him over to his back here. But Grindle is able to get free from Anthony's grasp and a great move by him to get free and not end up on his back. Grindle gets out, gets out in front of Anthony and is able to stand up for one point, so now it scores two to one with 20 seconds left in the, in the first period, I'm sorry. <laughs> 20 seconds left, both in neutral. As Anthony is easily, easily takes down Grindle for two points before the end of the first period. As the first period winds down, we have a score of four to one in Anthony's favor. And actually, Anthony was able to get a great tilt on Grindle and, ga and gain two more points. So the score at the end of the first period is six to one now. Great move by Anthony. Now for this period, the start of the second period, Anthony does start on bottom this time. If Grindle wants any chance of winning this match, he's got to turn it around here in the second period. Grindle showing good control on top. Grindle trying to work something here. But as you can see, Anthony's extremely strong, but does get that arm stuck in, in stuck under. Let's see if he can get Anthony on his back. Arm comes free. Anthony pops up on both legs and grabs the left leg of Grindle and gets it up high. Let's see if he can get that single leg takedown. and is unable to do it at, before he pushes Grindle out of bounds. They're gonna recollect here at the middle and we have about a one minute and 17 seconds left in the second period. Anthony has the seven one advantage right now. Shortly and after they started, they were pushed out of bounds for a minute and six seconds left. The score is now seven one. Anthony winning this match. Both trying to work position here. Anthony out in front of Grindle has his head under him. But let's see what he can do with it. And gets Grindle on his back with 42 seconds left in, in the second period. But cannot pin him if he is if his shoulders are out of bounds. He should be able to get three back points out of this. An excellent move by Anthony here. But Grindle does roll back it on his stomach, and, and Anthony pushes him out of bounds, and a great three-point move for Anthony here. Anthony Calls now him. has the advantage 11 to one over Grindle, and it's looking more disastrous for Grindle. Anthony goes on top here. 
Anthony in the lead here with 11, and a, a dominating 11 to 1 lead here. Grindle standing up, trying to escape, and gets that one point, causing the score to go to 11 and 2. Five seconds left here in the second period. He gets, and Anthony gets two points before the, the period ends with a, with a dominating, dominating score of 13 to 2. Anthony is absolutely explosive and absolutely dominating in this match. He is an incredible wrestler. Start of the third period here. Grindle on top. Grindle trying to get that tilt, but Anthony counters and it ends up spinning around the back of Grindle, getting two more points. If Anthony is able to get two more points, he will win by a major decision. If one of the wrestlers has a 15 to zero lead over the other wrestler, the match ends and it's ended and ends up um, ends up being a major decision win for that wrestler. So all he needs is two points and this match is over. Anthony trying to work something here on top. Very close to the edge. Almost gets something, but Grindle counters, but no one has control just yet. And a great reversal by Grindle to help prevent that, that uh, major decision win and gets Anthony's arm and almost is about to get him on his back until Anthony looks like he's going to counter, but both are in a sticky situation here. As the third quarter winds down, we have about 40 seconds. And Anthony has a 15-4 lead over Grindle from Perry Hall. We see here, in desperation, Grindle is trying as hard as he can to get Anthony on his back, whatever he can do to try to get that pin. This means so much for these wrestlers. They work all year for this moment. They try Grindle to refuses to give up and lose by major decision. He's going to ride it out to the end of this match. Oh, he gets, he gets Anthony on his back, but does not get any points. He missed a golden opportunity there. And what an excellent match by the two of them. At the conclusion of this match, we have a new Baltimore County champion for the 132-pound weight class, Tejan Anthony from Western Tech. Holden Taylor, 132. For the 138 pound Baltimore County Championship match, we have Trayvon Wright from Pikesville and Liam St. John from Towson. Trayvon Wright being the first seed and Liam St. John being the second seed. Wright having a 31, 31 and 1 record in the regular season and St. John having a 27 and 4 record. Both excellent records in the regular season. Both seniors and their last chance to become Baltimore County champions. Wright is in the black uh, singlet and St. John in the white singlet. Wright has some very interesting socks going on. <laughs> Quite the interesting socks he has on, indeed. Wright able to get behind St. John, get two points here at the beginning of the first period. And looking very dominant as this match begins. This match looks a lot more on the physical side than the explosive side. So we may see a low scoring match here. St. John trying to get out up from uh, Wright's grasp here, but is unable to as, as the, the strength from Wright is just overpowering. And, and look here, we have a, a, a powerful twi a tilt by Wright, able to get three points out of that. So the score is now 5 nothing. Wright leading St. John in closing the first period. 
We had the near fall here in the first period. Maybe we'll see a pin later on. The score right now is right from Pikesville 5 to St. John's 0. Wright is absolutely dominating this match right now. And St. John from Towson has yet to score a point. At the end of the first period, the score is 8-0 in Pikesville's favor. We see here Wright starts out the second period on bottom. Let's see how explosive he can be when the, when the whistle starts. St. John must keep right down if he doesn't want to give up any more points here today. Very explosive to start out, but but St. John does catch right Wright's arm, but Wright is able to escape and get out in front of St. John for one point for the escape. Both working for control here in neutral. Wright must must do something to change the momentum in this match today. He must take a shot. He's got to do something because Wright is absolutely dominating him today. Wright it's, takes a shot but is blocked by St. John. If St. John doesn't turn this momentum around soon, it seems like this match could be over very fast. And again, Wright is in the black singlet. St. John is in the white one. But what... St. John trying to work something on right there, but is unable to as, as Wright escapes it. Wright does get his, Wright does still have his head stuck under. Let's see what uh, St. John is able to do with it here. Trying to spin behind, get two points here, but is thrown out of bounds with 42 seconds left in the second period. And it looks here like St. John, I'm sorry, Wright got injured on the fall, but quickly gets back up. There's no way Wright's going to give this up, no matter what happens to him. He has a 9-0 lead, and he's ready to win this Baltimore County Championship. Both working something here. Both trying to get control. Wright takes a shot, gets a low single on St. John, and is able to get the two points at the end of the second period. A great shot by Wright to get uh, to get two more points as this period closes out. At the end of the second period, we have an 11-0 lead for Wright from Pikesville. He's struggling to get up, but he's going to finish this match strong. All Wright needs is now four more points to get a major decision win. A takedown and two back points will do it here. And he does get the single leg, but St. John kicks that leg out. Still working for control here. St. John tries to work a shot, but is unable to continue with it. Wright is just extremely athletic and is able to break out of all of St. John's moves. But St. John does shrug uh, right, right out, right past his shoulder, gets, gets behind him and gets two points here. We see here St. John trying to work that power half and the half Nelson here, but, but the strength of Wright is not letting him work any moves here. And I think I'm gonna see, we're going to see Wright just sort of ride out the rest of this match here on bottom and let the time run out because he is winning 11 to two. We've got a minute left in the third period. And I, I don't think the, uh, I think the strength of Wright will, won't allow St. John to flip him over to the back to get, to get more points. And now turns out of bounds with 53 seconds left. All right, with 53 uh, seconds left in this third period, we have an 11-2 score with Wright in the lead.
Oh, and an, an injury time is taken here by Wright, as we can see his his knee is bothering him greatly. He's had uh, a hard time getting up. Um, every time he's been taken down, he, he's just had a very hard time getting up. But still, even with that injury, even with the, the pain that he's going through right now, he's been able to dominate through this match and, and just take control with an 11-2, and a dominating 11-2 lead over St. John. I have a feeling when we get back to this third period, we're going to see a lot less explosiveness out of Wright. He's going to ride this timeout. Twenty-four seconds left on the injury time as they're trying to wrap both knees of Wright to get him back in that match and ready to wrestle. And it looks like the coaches are finished wrapping his knees. And Wright's ready to go. St. John starts out on top. Wright sits out and is trying to not let St. John get any sort of control and then escapes for one more point. Now the score is now 12 to 2. Even with that knee injury, Wright is still extremely explosive and extremely athletic. And maybe a little bit too chippy for some of these fans. A little bit. We saw Wright get a little bit of a cheap shot there on St. John, pushing him into his own coaches. A little interesting there. Even, even while winning the match, getting a little chippy there. I think he just wants the match to end. I think he just wants that county championship so bad. With 22 seconds left, they get pushed out of bounds, and Wright still has the lead, 12 to 2. And a shot right off the bat from St. John, but is immediately defended by Wright. Wright is just too quick for any of St. John's moves to land. St. John does get two final points as the third period ends. And the new county champion for the 138-pound weight class is Trayvon Wright out of Pikesville. A very, very dominating performance by him. He does deserve that win today. Trayvon won that match by decision in a 12-4 victory. The next match we have coming up is Demetrius Johnson from Owings Mills and Jacob Asher from Delaney. This is the 145-pound weight class. Now here we go, probably one of the most interesting matches we're going to see all night. Demetrius Johnson from Owings Mills with, the, with an, an amazing record of 29-0. Jacob Asher with an, uh, another great record of 30-3. Uh, Demetrius Johnson known as one of the best 145-pound wrestlers in the state. He is an absolute, uh, absolute, he puts on a great performance on the mat. Just quick, powerful, and, and just has tons of tricks up his sleeve. This match is going to be very explosive right from the get-go. We see both of them trying to work control. Now with Asher under his head, under Demetrius Johnson's. Trying to work something else here. As Demetrius gets the leg of Asher trying to get a takedown here. But is unable to finish through. They're going to recollect here at the middle and we'll see what happens. Both trying to gain control here in the middle of the map. for that leg and try and get this take down. But it's unable to get to, to wrap up the legs of Asher. As you can see the sheer strength in Asher's legs to sprawl back, get the hands of Demetrius Johnson off of him and, and to, to save himself from what could be a devastating takedown. Demetrius Johnson got to this match by defeating Scott Dangler from Eastern Tech in a fall and Jacob Asher got to this match by defeating Ori Shimrani 
from Pikesville in a 9-3 decision. With 50 seconds to go in the first period, the, the score remains 0-0. We're going to see an extremely, extremely close match throughout. Match starts again. They remain neutral. And Demet oh, and Asher gets a great takedown on Demetrius Johnson, getting two points here late in the first round. Asher has the early lead here, and we'll see if Demetrius can follow back with two more points. Demetrius gets out in front, but Asher still has that leg of Demetrius Johnson. Trying to work something. They're going to recollect here at the middle, and Demetrius Johnson is going to start on bottom. 14 seconds left in the first period. The score is still 2 to 0. Demetrius Johnson gets one point there right at the end of the first quarter. Um, we have a lead, a 2 1 lead for Jacob Asher from Delaney. And you can just see the sheer strength and endurance out of. Uh, Johnson here, just absolutely uh, uh, amazing how he can how he can go so hard in the first period and still have have energy and, and breath left in the first period. And we see Asher letting Demetrius Johnson up and taking the one point. So the score is now two two, starting the second period. Very surprising decision by Asher. See this match back tied up and very close. Both of these guys are athletic and explosive, and it's going to be a really great match as it goes along. Both trying to work for control here. As Asher pushes Johnson out of bounds and start the second round up again at 1 minute and 30 seconds. I know, so do I. I can see that. Score, till two, score is still 2-2. Two, two. Neither wrestler has showed any kind of dominance. They both look very equal right now. Ooh, Johnson showing his quickness, trying to spin behind and get those two points there. Both starting to show some, some signs of being tired. As the wear and tear of this, this difficult, difficult match, you know, begins to, to affect both of these wrestlers. Johnson takes a shot, but it is immediately blocked by Asher. Both trying to work for control here, with 37 seconds left in the second period. Second quarter winds down. We still have a tie matchup going on. Both still working for control. You know, both of these have both of these wrestlers have a very very similar style of wrestling. So so one of them needs to find a weakness in, in the other style and try to uh, capitalize on that. With 12 seconds, they're driven out of bounds, and we still have a tie matchup in these last seconds of the second quarter. We're going to start here in neutral in the middle, and let's see if someone can get some points in these last 12 seconds of the second period. Having a little bit of technical difficulties for Asher, he couldn't seem to get his headgear back on, had to have the ref come out and uh, button it up for him. Gives Demetrius Johnson a little second to breathe, gather himself, get some strategy ready. 12 seconds left. Looks like Johnson is really, really thirsty for a shot here. And at the end of the second period, the score remains tied at 2-2. Two to two. This third quarter should be very, very exciting with a tie matchup. It all comes out of this. The third period.
at the beginning of the third period, we see the frustration of Asher as he tried to escape out of bottom, but was unable to. Asher still on bottom, trying to escape here to get that one point that could be the deciding factor in this third period, but still has one leg caught in Asher's grasp and is kicking out and does is able to get that one point right from they get Johnson. And that could be the deciding factor in this match today. What a great move by Asher to escape. We see some great sportsmanship here as they both high-five each other, just showing mutual respect for one another. You know, you see a, a close match like this. Both of these guys respect each other greatly. They, they both enjoy coming out here, wrestling after the third period. You know, they love this sport. They, they love coming out here. They love the challenge. And, you know, this is what it's all about. With a minute and ten seconds left in the third period, the score is, remains at three to two. Both wrestlers really, really trying to work something here. Asher cannot rest on this one-point lead. He must continue to work with Johnson. If Asher maintains this lead, this would be the first defeat for Johnson all season. Those wrestlers vigorously trying to work for something here. And you can tell Demetrius does not want to lose this match. Clock stops is at 26 seconds. And you can hear a collective sound of booing as Demetrius Johnson takes an injury timeout to get a drink of water here. And I, honestly, Amber, I don't think that's very fair how you can take your injury timeout to get a breath. You have to stay out on that mass match. Matt and wrestle. I think you should follow the rules. An injury is an injury, and clearly there's nothing injured yeah. for him. A lot of unhappiness in the stands. A lot of disapproval of this action that he's chosen to take. Dimitri Johnson tries to stay shot, but Asher quickly defends the shot here. We gotta see Demetrius works something with 13 seconds left, left in the match. Both players trying to work for control. The crowd gets extremely excited. Six Seven seconds, seconds left. left. Demetrius vigorously trying to work for something. With all of his power in my trying to work as hard as he can. And we have a new and Asher won the county championship here. And the backflip. Jacob Asher from Delaney has won the 145 pound What a match. Champion. With the first loss of the season, Demetrius Johnson lost in the county finals to the underdog Jacob Asher with a record of 30 and 3 in the regular season. What a sensational win for Asher today. And you can understand how he is with that very close call of a possible takedown in that last second of the match. Next up, we have the 152 pound weight class, and we have Antoine Reddick from Owings Mills competing against Tony Simmel from Western Tech. Tony Simmel uh, with a regular season record of 28 and 5, and Reddick with a record of 23 and 1. We can already see Reddick taking control of this uh, match. Uh, Reddick with Reddick is in the white singlet, and Simmel is in the black singlet. Both scrambling for points here as Reddick gets the first two points of the match. Reddick is favored in this match and he does have an early lead with, a hunt, with one minute and 15 seconds left. Sam Simuel still stuck on bottom. Reddick still trying to work that arms up, still trying to get, and gets Simwell, Simwell on his back, getting back points now. But, but Simwell counters, 
And they're both scrambling for position here as Redick is able to get two points, back points, off of Simmel. Getting back points here is Redick with a, with a tilt, able to get two back points out of that to bring the score up to 6-0 with 30 seconds left in the first period. Simmel trying to escape but cannot escape Redick's grasp. Redick has taken a very explosive lead in this first period. He's up by 6-0 as the period winds down with about 10 seconds left. Redick remains on top to close out the first period. Score remains at 6-0 and uh, absolutely dominating period by Redick. All right, that brings about the end of the first period. Redick has a 6-0 lead over his opponent, Simmel from Western Tech. Reddick's going to start bottom in the second period, and let's see if Simmel can turn around his momentum and get some points here. As Simmel starts on top, Reddick immediately gets up, but is slammed down out of bounds by Simmel. As the whistle is blown, Reddick tries to make a move, but is countered by Simeon. Reddick stands up. We'll see if he can get an escape here, but is slammed down by Simeon. Reddick standing up here. And Simeon trying to work a move on him. Both stuck in this position here. Reddick gets the reversal with a minute and 13 seconds left in the second period and, and ensues an 8 nothing lead. But Simuel quickly escapes to get, a, to, to get that one point he was looking for. Reddick takes a low single, but Simuel is out of bounds and gets the two points. So now it is 10 to 1. Reddick has been extremely dominating this entire match. If Simmel wants any chances of winning, he needs to turn this around. Simmel now on top. I, I'm sorry, Reddick now on top. Gets that arm caught under. And gets Simmel on his back, but Simmel flips over top and is unable to remain on his back. Reddick's still on top, trying to work something. With 10 seconds left to end out the, the second period, Reddick has shown an extremely dominating performance over Simuel this, this match. All right, at the end of the second period, Reddick is beating Simuel 10 to 1. Simmel starts on top as Reddick immediately gets up and tripods up, but, but ends up back down on his knees. It looks like Simmel is getting a little too high here as Reddick tries to snap out and spins behind for a great reversal to add two more points to his ten point for his nine to his nine point lead. I'm sorry. Reddick gets the turk in, gets his leg through that leg of Simmel. Is trying to look. He has Simmel on his back in this third period. The minute and 20 seconds left. 
Reddick remains on top, Swimwell still on bottom. Both stuck in this position, both trying to work for something here. Reddick has not given up his dominance this entire match. He's up 12 to 1 over his opponent, Tony Simmel from Western Tech. Reddick now pushes Simmel out of bounds, and we can see the, 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 the sudden optimism, the look of optimism in Reddick's face, in Reddick's face as the third period comes to a close. He has a 12 to 1 lead. It is very, very, very hard for, an, uh, for the opponent to come out of a lead this deep. We're going to have a clock switch here from 54 seconds down to 44. Making it even harder for Simwell to win this match. And Antoine Reddick from Owens Mills is now 30 seconds away from a Baltimore County Championship victory. He is, but, but still, Simwell has not stopped trying has not given up yet, and, I, and that is very, very respectful of the from him. One more point Seven added for Simmel with that escape, and we have about three seconds left until we have a new Baltimore County champion for the 152-pound weight class. And with that, to close of the third quarter, Andrew Reddick from Owings Mills High School is your new 152-pound weight class with Baltimore champion. An absolutely dominating performance as well. have the 160 pound weight class championship with Farley from Kenwood and Hall Hurt from Pikesville. Nianbu Farley from Kenwood has a, a record of 27-1 in regular season and Cameron Hall Hurt has a record of 29-3. Both great wrestlers. Watch the reps. Cameron Hallhurt is in the black singlet, and Nyanbu Farley from Kenwood is in the white one. Farley's last match to get to this round against Ian Cherbill was won in a 2-0 decision. And Hallhurt's last match against Austin Harrison from Western Tech was won in an 8-2 decision. Paul Hurd is going to start.
start the second period on bottom. And I'm back. We did have a little bit of technical difficulties there. My mic was not working at the moment, but I am back now. Here we have Nyambu Farley on top, but Hallhurt is sitting out, trying to escape. A minute and 30 seconds left in the second round. But a great reversal by Hallhurt. It has Nyambu Farley on his back with a minute and 25 seconds left, and it ends up getting two points reversal and two points back. To Hallhurt. gain the lead, what a great move. Hallhurt has totally turned this momentum around, coming from a 2-0 deficit to winning this match right now with a 4-2. He's gained dominance over his opponent, and he may have turned the momentum around totally. Now Hallhurt trying to work Farley on top, gets another two back points. I mean, what a great turnaround in the second period by Hallhurt. Hallhurt has turned the switch on, and he refuses to lose this match. As Hallhurt pushes Farley out of bounds, there's 37 seconds left in the second period with a score of six to two. All hurt on top, Farley on bottom now. Farley with a quick move to try to get out, but is blocked by Hallhurt. Hallhurt has his leg in in a, in Farley's leg, trying to work something here. But ends up getting a potentially dangerous call, and, and they start back in their they start back in their positions. Farley is going to be on bottom as we have 23 seconds left in the second period. And Hallhurt is winning this match 6-2 to two against Farley from Kenwood. Both at a standing position now, both stalling. But as Hallhurt... Slam down onto the mat. And as the second period winds down, we have a 6-2 lead with Farley from Kenwood. Four seconds left. The score remains 6-2 with Hallhurt still on top, still working Farley, and they both look extremely winded. If Farley wants any chance of becoming the champion here, he needs to turn the momentum back into his favor. He may do so. He just got it at one point on that escape, so now the score is 6 6-3 with Hallhurt in the favor. Farley did escape and got that one point to bring his four-point deficit up to a three-point deficit. They're both on neutral, both trying to work something. Farley takes a shot, but is unable to continue to finish. He still has his right hand on his right on uh, Hallhurt's right leg. Let's see what he's able to do with this now. Still trying to drive, still trying to get control of Hallhurt, but is unable to grab complete control of Hallhurt's leg. And they're driven out of bounds with 46 seconds left in this third period, with Hohert keeping that 6-3 victory over Farley. With 33 seconds on left, Hallhurt and Farley both in neutral as, Hall as Farley tries to take a shot, but Hallhurt quickly, quickly sprawls back and blocks the shot. And one point for Farley as Hallhurt was called with an illegal headlock. And the coaches are very unhappy with this call. All right, 
going to resume it. this with 27 seconds. And Farley is only two points down of Hallhurt. Now, in order for Farley to tie up this match, he must take down Hallhurt. And he gets a shot off, but Hallhurt quickly sprawls back, unable to finish. And with that nine seconds left, Hallhurt is getting closer and closer to becoming that champion. And at the end of that match, we now have a new Baltimore County champion for the 160-pound weight class, Cameron Hallhurt from Pikesville High School. And a great, I do have to say, a great third period performance from Farley to get out, get some points, escape, and, and, and that, uh, that illegal headlock call on Hallhurt could have uh, affected him greatly. A great turnaround there. We had Farley with the early lead, but then it was... Cameron who came back and won it. All right, we now have the 170 pound weight class. We have Billy Hess from Hereford High School and Trevor Jackson from Catonsville. Billy Hess being the fourth seed with a record of 22 and six and Trevor Jackson being the third seed with a record of 24 and nine. Both great wrestlers. Billy Hess coming from a very, very good wrestling program being that he's from the Hereford program, notorious around Baltimore County. For, for producing state champions and, and regional champions. Just a great program. A little bit of difficulty with our headpiece here. We're going to resume back here with a minute and 40 seconds. And there's no score yet. Both still in neutral, trying to work for head position here. As Van takes a shot, but, but uh, immediately gets back up to work something else. Both, both trying to work something here. As Hess takes a shot and almost brings down Van, but Van whizzers out and is able to counter the shot here. But, but then a great headlock by Hess and they get those two points. And then they both end up going out of bounds for a, a fit with 54 seconds left in the first period. Hess able to get two points with a great headlock throw. Van sits out, stands up with, to get one point, and now the score is now 2-1. Hess got to this match by defeating opponent El Omari from Owings Mills in a fall, and Jackson got to this match by defeating Dunchy from Milford in a 10-2 decision. Hess with a deep shot, has now it's a single leg, Pushes Van right back and down, right back down. But Van is able to escape the shot. Billy Hess in the lead, two to one. Against opponent Jackson from Catonsville. Yes, I'm sorry, I said I was saying Van the whole time. It's it's Jackson from Catonsville, excuse me. We have the four and five seed facing off right here for the number one. And at the end of the first period, the score is two to one. If Billy has taken the lead. Billy has the furs. Trevor Jackson takes bottom. one point for a neutral and we now have a tie match. Both, both neutral now, working for head position, working for position here as Hess takes a deep shot, gets a single leg up on Jackson, but they are both near the outside of the, of the wrestling circle here. With a close match like this, can you see why he would give up that point? He's been doing extremely successful on neutral and he's been getting these deep shots, but he just needs to finish them. Jackson eventually escaping from that shot, and Hess gets another deep shot on Jackson and needs to finish. He needs to get his head out to the side and drive and pick up and finish these shots. It's crucial that he does that. Hess still has that, that left leg of Jackson as they both go out of bounds. 
With a minute and nine left in the second period, we still have a 2-2 score. Both are neutral. Hess must continue to work for those shots if he wants to, to win this match. And another deep shot by Hess, but finishes and does get the two points this time on Jackson, but ends up going out of bounds. So now the score is four to two with 50 seconds left. And it looks like Jackson was injured from that shot. And, and uh, injury time has been started for Catonsville. Um, Billy, and with our injury timeout, we have Billy Hess in the lead from Hereford four to Trevor Jackson from Catonsville's two. It's never good to see guys getting injured in these important matches. You feel bad for them and they worked all season for this and it's, it could be gone within a second. You know, they, they take the risk every time they step on the mat from getting a serious injury, but it's all part of the sport. You know, most of these guys are extremely tough. They could take pretty much anything that these wrestlers give them, you know. Looks like he's alright, looks like he's about to get back up, and he does. With uh, 53 seconds left on the injury time. Injury time now stops. With 51 seconds left on the clock. It's, it is 4 to 2. Billy Hess does have the lead. Trevor Jackson on bottom now. Trevor Jackson unable to sit out and stand up here, but he does eventually do a second move and is able to stand up immediately right after the failed attempt. Billy has with another deep shot and has the left leg of Trevor Jackson deep in, but he must continue to drive and must continue to take that to take advantage of these deep shots that he's been getting. Trevor and Jackson. nobody can get any points before they're driven out of bounds. With 23 seconds left in the second period, we have a very close matchup here. We have Hess in the lead, four to three. Both in neutral now with 14 seconds left. With another deep shot on Jackson. And this time, he is unable to finish the shot as they both go out of bounds with four seconds left. Is going to let the, the match end here. Now going to the third period, we're going to see a very exciting third period here as Billy has kicks bottom, Trevor Jackson takes top. Injury time for Hereford. We see some sort of uh, problem going on with Hess. Not sure exactly what's wrong. Possibly just a strategy meeting. Mm -hmm. Injury time has been stopped as Billy Hess takes the bottom position. And Trevor Jackson is returning to the middle of the mat so they can start this third period. Gets in front of Jackson, grabs that right leg of Jackson tight and deep. Let's see if he can do something with it. But does not get at an escape, so he must remain on the bottom. minute and 47 seconds left. The score is five to three in the third period. As Billy Hess tries to get up, he does eventually, spins out and gets a reversal and gets the reversal here with two points and ensues his lead seven to three but then but then Trevor Jackson is able to grand roll and escape out with a point. So the, the score is now seven to four. An exciting, exciting period for both of these wrestlers here. Jackson with a minute and three seconds left must do something in order to, to, to gain the lead or get Billy Hess on his back to, to, 
to get the win in this uh, championship match. As Billy Hess gets another deep shot on Trevor Jackson, takes him down for another two points to, to gain another two points, and the score is now 9-4 with 20 seconds left in the third period. He has and just about put this match out of grips of Trevor Jackson. Trevor Jackson looks looks almost hopeless as he's laying on bottom. He just want, It looks like he's almost just wants his match to end. And with five seconds, I think that's exactly what he's gonna do. He's gonna let the clock run out. But what an amazing performance by Billy Hess. Billy Absolutely Hess dominant. from Hereford High School is now the Baltimore County champion for the 170 pound weight class. He defeated Trevor Jackson in a 9 4 decision. Trevor Jackson was actually down at the end of that match and defeated, but he has got up and walked off on his own power. We now have the 182 pound county championship with Jarrah Vin from Owings Mills and Nenoratis from Towson. Sorry if I butchered any names there. Camille Jarave with a record of 28 and 6, Nathan Nenoratis with a record of 26 and five. Both neutral here, both trying to work position. We have the one and two seed facing off, so it should be a very interesting matchup here. Drave moving very quickly. Drave in the white and gold singlet. Nanoratis in the white and black singlet here. Jarev won his last match to get to this round against Colin Jones from Eastern Tech in a fall. And Nenaratis from Towson won his last match to get here with a 9-3 decision against Joe Miller from Hereford. Nenaratis tries to take a shot, but Jarev immediately sprawls, pushing Nenaratis' head down and then shrugs Nenaratis' spy to get behind, get control, and get those two points. Great move by Jarev though. Nenoratis on bottom. Jarev trying to work. Jarev with the lead, 2 nothing, with that great shrug to get behind and get control. Sort of shrug Nenoratis by and spun around. Jarave on top, crushing Nenaratis' attempt to stand up, both on the edge of the mat here, trying to work something before the first period ends. Ten seconds left, both wrestlers on the edge of the mat here, but are pushed out of bounds with six seconds left. With six seconds left, Jarev can keep that lead 2-0. Nenaras attempts to stand up, but Jarev immediately crushes it down. And, to and, end and at the end of the first period, Jarev continues to keep that lead 2-0. All right, Jarev is going to start the second period on bottom. Jarev immediately tries to sit out and look for that switch and succeeds. He's able to stand up and get that one point. 
to increase his lead to 3-0. Jurave slamming Nataratis' head back and is able to spin around and get two more points to increase his lead to 5-0 now. Jurave still on top, trying to work something out of Nataratis. Both stuck in this position here. Drave on top, almost sitting on Nederatis, trying to trying to work something. As and time the, takes down, they remain in that same position there. The match has now come to its halfway point. The rest, Nederatis must stand up and do something if he would like to win this county championship here. Both stalling. They're going to start from their positions again. Nenaras <laughs> tries to stand up, but Jurave trips him back down, and both are in that same position that they've been stuck in for most of the second period. As Nenaratis just lays down, tries, tries, and tries, and tries to get up, but but the strength of Jurave just is absolutely too overpowering. Not very much going on here, but Jurave will maintain that 5-0 lead with about 23 seconds left here in the second period. Still in that same position they've been in for most of the second round. As time ticks down, Dre maintains his dominating performance with a 5-0 lead over Nenaratis. All right, at the end of that second period, Jarev will maintain that 5-0 lead over Nenaratis. Both, both starting in neutral now. see how Nenaratis handles the this third period as he needs a crucial five points to at least tie this match and go into overtime. Both moving very slow as they look both extremely winded. Nenaratis takes a shot but is sprawled on by Jurev. Jurev is able to spin around and get another two points to add to his lead and make a seven and to nothing lead. With the slow movement of this match, the 7 0 lead is almost detrimental to Nenaratis. The clock has now come down to, the, to a one minute mark in the third period, and Jurev is one minute away from becoming the 182 pound county champion if Nenaratis does not decide to get up and do something here. Drave trying to roll the arms of Nenaratis under himself, trying to work control here. Absolutely a dominating performance on top by Drave. Not allowing Nenaratis to move at all. Just With they, less they... than 30 seconds, Drave looks more and more like he's going to become the Baltimore County champion. Drave still riding Nenaratis, still trying to, to break him down, but Nenaratis almost able to escape here in late in the third round. And with eight seconds left, it looks like Drave will be our next 182 pound county champion. And there the, it is, folks. Our new Baltimore County champion for the 182-pound weight class is Camille Jara from Owings Mills High School. He defeated Nathan Natteris in a uh, decision. What an absolutely dominating performance by Jarev. Just, just rode Natteris out on top, 
wasn't allowing him to move at all. Just a great, great match by Drew. Next up, we have the 195-pound weight class. We have Peyton Beecham from Western Tech High School. And we have Brock Turnbaugh from Hereford. Brock Turnbaugh is the second seed from Hereford with a record of 25-4. and four. Beecham from Western Tech with a record of 24-4. and four. Beecham in the uh, black singlet. Both starting out neutral here. Both trying to work control. Beecham made it to this match by defeating Paul Kr James Krug in a fall. And Turnbaugh made it to this match by defeating Terrence Henry in an overtime decision of 3-1. to one. And a slow start to this 195-pound match. Both wrestlers look like they're, they're trying to, to feel each other. They're trying, to, they're trying to feel each other's wrestling technique. They're trying to, to, to recognize each other's skills and weaknesses. I think this one's going to be down to the wire. Turnbaugh tried to take a shot there, but Beecham immediately scrawls down and tries to spin around, but is unable to get the two points, and they both end up standing back up on their feet neutral. More than halfway through this first period, we still have no score here. Both wrestlers demonstrating a great amount of strength here in the first period, not letting not, not letting each other get a takedown, not letting each other move. Both really trying to work for head position, uh, hand control on top, or hand control on neutral here. This is just going to be a really great matchup, and it's definitely going to come right down to the wire. Unless one of these guys can establish some dominance and get over on the, on the other one. And at the end of the first period, the score is now 0-0. Both wrestlers really trying to, to, to recognize one another's skills and weaknesses. We'll see how Beecham reacts on bottom. We'll see how Turnball reacts on top. See if Beecham can get out. Beecham tries to get up, but Turnball immediately snaps him back down. And a second attempt by Beecham, but is unable to get up onto his onto his feet. Beecham's having a hard time trying to get an escape from here with almost no movement. Turbo is dominating from the top. Absolutely right. You know, just like last match, we're seeing Turnball absolutely dominate Beecham on top, control him. Now what he has to do is work for a move, try to get Beecham on his back, try to get those points now. Both players ended up going out of bounds. We're going to start back in the middle here. Beecham's going to be back on bottom, and unless he can get an explosive move to get an escape, it's going to be a lot like what we just saw. Beecham with an extremely explosive first move is able to get a reversal for those two points. An excellent move by Beecham to sit out and get behind Turnball to get those two points. And I think those two points will be the deciding factor in this match. And Abe, uh, oh, and, and Beecham able, able to pick up and slam Turnball back on the ground. And, and Beecham maintaining a 2 nothing lead. Here with 45 seconds left in the second period and is now riding Turnball on top. What a great change in momentum here. And he drives him out of bounds with 36 seconds left in the second period. Beecham has a 2-0 lead over Turnball. Beecham starts on top here. Turnball trying to get out, but the absolute strength of Beecham will not allow it. But Turnball is able to stand up. Let's see if he can make something out of it. But, oh, but Beecham he slammed, slammed. By Beecham. What a great move by Beecham to get him back down on the ground.
But Turnbull is able to get out and able to get one point before the end of the second period. Five seconds left. A great physical period between these two wrestlers. And that brings about the end of the second period. Beecham has a 2-1 lead over Turnbull. Let's see how Beecham is going to handle being on top and if he can turn it into more points. Because Turnbull was able to escape late in that second round again, he chose bottom. Let's see if he can do the same thing. Turnbull sits out, stands up, and is not able Quickly to get... Quickly slammed down onto the mat by Beecham. But by second effort... And again! Slam. Beecham is Turnbull. showing his sheer strength here. Turnbull. And really trying to wear Turnbull down. Turnbull is now standing up again, facing Beecham, but is not gone free, and it does get the one point. And this match is tied, ladies and gentlemen. Both on neutral, both trying to work something here. But we may see this match going to overtime if none of them work something here. Both, both wrestlers still working for control, both working for position. And we're about halfway through this third period, and we have a tie score of two. Both guys are trying to get control and trying to get some points here late in this match. With 50 seconds left, the score remains at 2-2. Two, two. An exciting match. Beecham oh, almost almost able to get something out of that, but is unable to finish through because of the space that he had left on the mat. Both wrestlers extremely worn out, but I think this match may go into overtime. About 30 seconds left and still no clear show of who's going to be more dominant. Turnball takes a shot, but Beecham immediately swallows. Turnball stands up. And it's almost able to get Beecham down, but Beecham stands up. Let's see if he's... Beecham on the ground, he gets the two points. He is able to get Beecham the two points with 15 seconds left in the third period. An amazing, amazing move by Turnball here. Five seconds left. And Turnball just won. The 195 pound county championship, he made sure that that match would not go into overtime there. That late takedown really saved him, and now we have a new champion. Great job by Turnball from Hereford to, to get a move late in the match get Beecham down for those two points, and that was an unbelievable match. Our next match is the 220 pound weight class. We have Mike Swigger from Hereford competing against Jordan Reynolds from Kingsville. Mike Swigger being the first seed, Jordan Reynolds being the third seed. Mike Swigger with a, a better record than Reynolds, a record of 28 and one, Reynolds with a record of 28 and nine. We'll see here if Hereford can add back-to-back -back county championships to their wrestling team. Mike Swigger got to this round by defeating Jordan Gale from Chesapeake High School with a fall. And Jordan Reynolds got to this round by defeating Stefan Burden from Kenwood with a fall. Both very strong wrestlers. And in the solid color singlet. You see Swigger. Both wrestlers still trying to work for position here. In the Navy and Gold singlet, we have Jordan Reynolds. <coughs> Not much going on here in the first period. Both wrestlers trying to feel each other's techniques. There's 
still here just trying to feel each other out. We are about a minute and a half into the first period. Neither guy has really shown any clear sign of dominance over his opponent yet, but I'm sure we'll see something more in the second period coming up soon. Both players have yet to work something major. At the end of the first period, the score is tied at 0-0. Swigger for the second round takes bottom. Let's see how explosive he can be. Tries to get up. Gets a second attempt. Let's see if he can get out here. And does, able to get the first point of the match in the second round with an escape on Reynolds. Oh, and nothing comes out of it before they're brought out of bounds. With a one minute and 45 seconds left in the second period, Swigger is up one to zero. Reynolds just took Swigger and just pushed him out of bounds, didn't even try to work anything there. From the neutral position, these guys are very equal to each other. And that's what makes it such an interesting match. I think the deciding factor of this match will end up on top or bottom. Score remains 1-0, Swigger winning. Both wrestlers need to work something in order to, to keep this match at a, at a very fast pace. The ref continually tells them to stop stalling. They're just standing here, not wrestling. With about 27 seconds here left in our second period, Mike Swigger maintains his 1-0 lead over Jordan Reynolds. Still nothing major going on in the neutral position here. I, I think we're going to see something major going on in the third round once one of these wrestlers takes top or bottom. And at the end of the second period, Mike Swigger still is up 1-0 over Jordan Reynolds. Here at the beginning of this third period, we should see something when Jordan Reynolds will start on bottom. And quickly he tries to escape, but Swigger's not having it. Swigger must maintain that 1-0 lead. This is going to be an extremely, and is an extremely low scoring match. Both are pushed out of bounds with a minute and 43 seconds to go in the third period. Score still 1-0. And Reynolds is going to be back on bottom here with one minute and 41 seconds to go. Reynolds trying to get up with Swigger, not allowing him to stand up on his feet, still breaking him down on his stomach, not even allowing him to get up back on his knees at this point. He gets his arm under and gets Reynolds on his back. An unbelievable move by Swigger. To get, to get Reynolds on his back and get three back points to, to bring his lead up to 4-0. A great move by Mike Swigger out of Hereford. Reynolds must do something here if he wants to have any hope of winning this match. And again gets the arm under and gets Jordan Reynolds on his back. And getting, getting back points here, this may be the end of the match here. And Jordan Reynolds gets Jim Reynolds flat on the back and puts him in the 220 pound county championship match. Mike Swigger pins Jordan Reynolds late in the third period. What an excellent dominating period by Mike Swigger.
absolutely amazing. All right, and for our last county championship match of the day, the 285 pound weight class, we have Matt Green from Perry Hall High School and Steven Gabale from Milford Mill. Steven Gabale in the white singlet and Matt Green with an astounding, absolutely amazing record of 31 and zero has yet to be defeated. Matt Green starts out trying to take a shot, but is unable to follow through as Steven Gabale backs up. Both trying to work for positioning here. Matt Green got to this match by defeating Patrick Anderson from Hereford with a fall, and Steven Gabale got to this match Steven by Steven Gabale takes a shot, has the ankle of Gabale, but is on the edge of the mat, is unable to continue and get control, get those points. He's trying to bring it back into the mat. Can he spin around here and get these two points? Got the two points, is able to spin around before they both go out of bounds. A great move by Green here. <laughs> All right, we're going to start here with Gabale on bottom, and let's see if he can get some points now. Steven Gabale tried to stand up, but Matt Green pushed him out of bounds before he could. Getting him in the, is a spladle, I think, almost a spladle, but then Gabale getting Green on his back. And a very controversial no call as the crowd yells too, thinking that Gabale got the two points, but it did not happen. The ref did not call it. Still seeing extreme displeasure from the crowd. I mean, very, very controversial. It did look like that Gabelle got the two points, I must say. Gabelle now on bottom. Green takes top here at the end of the third period. Gabelle trying to stand up, but unable to, as Green gets it on behind. Let's see if he can do something with it now. Able to get Gabelle on his back and getting back points now is Matt Green. And to end the, the Baltimore Our County Championships, Matt Green pins Stephen Gabale with 4.7 seconds left in the first period. An excellent win by Matt Green. Extremely dominating. So Matt Green from Perry Hall High School is our new Baltimore County champion for the 285 pound weight class. A lot of great matches we saw out here today, Amber, just this absolute great competition. I mean, what an exciting set of matches for the, for the Baltimore County Championship round. If someone wasn't into wrestling before they saw this today, there's no way they could not As we can see, everybody is either congratulating or making one another feel better for an excellent set of matches here at the Ronald Belenko District 6 Wrestling Tournament here at Franklin High School. One match away from immortality. This is a total team effort.
Patrick Allen, heavyweight. Holden Taylor, 132. Nick Montagna, 126 pounds. Wyatt Alkaswani, 113. Brad Kessler, 152. Austin Mowry, 145. Ben Montagna, 120. Austin Waterman, 186. wrestling coach in high school was my football coach and he said if you want to play football you're gonna to have to wrestle so that's how I got started there and had some success and later on when I started teaching physical education and coaching wrestling in Baltimore County at Eastern and Overly I had some great youngsters and had some success there and the thing just snowballed it's a great sport in spite of the Olympic Committee dropping it for the 2014 Summer Games, it's it's a fabulous sport for young people to be involved in. Mr. Blanco, it's an honor to meet you. After your career as a wrestler was over, what drove you to, to continue staying involved with wrestling? To give something back to the sport on the administrative level. Someone has to run the tournament. Someone has to be an administrator in charge to, to keep it going. And, and that's what I did, was giving back to the sport that I loved so much. We all know you have an extremely long list of accolades, but like, what are you most proud of? Most proud of when I was teaching and coaching, and I'm not talking about the individual things, just working with young people. Look, for instance, tonight, there were some ex-students that came up to me that had grandchildren here wrestling, and just the impact that you made on, on those students' lives as a teacher and a coach, that's the impact and that's the satisfaction you get when you're, when you're in education. And, and also, on the mat, you see all, all types of sportsmanship, whether bad or good. You know, what type of role do you think wrestling plays when, when kids participate in the sport at a high school level? Well, for example, uh, I can't remember his name now, from Owens Mills. There was an article on a young man in this week's Sun paper talking about uh, the hardships he came through and what wrestling has done for him. So that's the role wrestling plays, not winning and losing. Uh, you're on that mat just to make quality young people and know that here's something that you're going to do on your own. And if it keeps a youngster on the straight and narrow and, and motivates them in school, that's what they really Absolutely. get out of it. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. All right. Under your leadership as the Baltimore County Coordinator of Athletics, all 24 high school sponsored wrestling teams. How did you encourage this to happen or like make sure that all the teams had wrestling teams? What you do is you continue to promote the importance of it. You have to search out for quality coaches, and we have some quality coaches at Baltimore County, and have them promote that sport. And when there's an opening or there's a void at a school where wrestling is really not uh, a top sport or you have a lack of numbers, you go out there and work with them and encourage them. I know Owens, uh, Newtown, the uh, last, couple, last couple of years I was in my position, I would go over there because of my wrestling background and give the coach ideas and talk with the youngsters. And, getting too old to roll around with young to show them a few moves and, and that motivated the team to do well. And as a former wrestler, I got to ask you, how does it, how do you feel about uh, wrestling being taken away as an Olympic sport? I, naturally, and, and we're all saddened in the wrestling community and you all just covered this and did a fantastic job. You see the fans, you see the youngsters wrestling and to take that away from the Olympics when it was one of the first Olympic sports, the oldest Olympic sport, to take that away, it, it's really going to hurt the sport. I really think that the wrestling associations, the coach associations, I think they're going to fight that and hopefully they'll reverse their decision. Absolutely. But it would really be a setback for the sport of wrestling and they're not looking at what it does to motivate young people. I agree. Thank you so Thank much you so for much. your time and we're very honored to meet you and good luck with all your future successes. Thank you. Thank, Thank you so you. much. I appreciate it. You too. Thank you so much. Thanks so much. And that was Robert Belenko with over 46 years of wrestling experience being involved in the sport. He's done so much for Baltimore County. And as Amber said, and as Amber said, you know, this guy has this guy has gotten wrestling teams for every single 
school in Baltimore County, and that's that's really something to be appreciated. You know, you see schools all over the state that don't have wrestling teams, poor, poor, uh, poor athletic programs, and to, to know that this guy is involved is just really amazing. Right, it's really, he's been such a crucial role to wrestling, like not only in Baltimore County, but in the whole state of Maryland. He's helped set up how the tournament goes, and he's just been like a very influential factor in every part of it. Absolutely. Just a, just a very, very, very helpful, and a, a, what a great role model he's been to everybody. You know, he's influenced the, the Franklin High School athletic director, uh, Coach Rich Reed, and, and just, just absolutely has been helping everybody in the athletic programs for Baltimore County for such a long time. This guy definitely deserved the award he got tonight. Yeah. And now, right now, and now, right now, and now, right now, they're getting ready to do the award ceremonies here. You know, all these kids that work so hard, uh, they, they deserve everything they get here. Uh, uh, and it, it's, it's thrilling to see these kids, these, these kids step up and work so hard and, and get these awards tonight here. Um, you can Facebook at Rockshore Media. Now, okay, we're here now with alumni Tom Tricka. Now, Tom, it's good to see you again. How you oh, been, it's bud? Good to be here. Nice, I'm nice. Doing okay. So uh, to see you here and come back here and see, you know, such a success in the Franklin High program, having uh, uh, one of the kids of Franklin High come in, uh, come in the finals. How do you feel about Franklin High still maintaining its level of competitiveness? I mean, it's a it's a pretty neat thing. Uh, you gotta give credit to those guys. I mean, this is an individual sport, so I mean, yeah, all the credit goes to them and the coaches. What kind of uh, role did like wrestling play on your life, in, like high school? Uh, I would say huge impact. Like uh, you learn self-discipline and all that jazz. All that jazz. Yeah, I got all you. That jazz. Real funky jazz too. <laughs> <laughs> now as. Now we know you were extremely successful in high school. Who do you who did you see tonight that you think will make it extremely far? You know, we had the the, the guy, the 295 guy, the 31, Matt Green. We had Nick Montagna, you know, play second in counties from Franklin. You know Wait, wait, wait. Did you just ask me who I who, who would you, I beat? Who would you beat? I, I would have wrestled them all at once in a Royal Rumble match. <laughs> with one hand behind two hands behind my back and I would have won. Nice. Alright, thanks. So much for your time, and now we're going to take a look over at the ceremony. Okay. All right, thanks, Tom. Take me off. Am I off? Is okay. It's online. Nate, are we live?
Oh. What? what? And in the other end of the gym, opposite of the ceremony, we have all the Franklin players who wrestled today taking a nice picture. What a tight knit team they are. Just great chemistry on the team. Everybody on the team is friends. As you can see, Nick and Ben Marzania, brothers on that team, both supporting each other as they continue to move on in the championship round. Yo, Nathaniel! be here for? Like, I don't know, if we can get out of help and break everything down, we'll be gone. Okay. I can get my dad to pick me up, by the way. Oh, 
Okay. There's Turnbull and then the Paranormal. Matt Green. That's not good. What? The clip fell off. This has been an FHS production sponsored by Rockshore Media. Have a great evening, everybody. Patrick Allen, heavyweight. Holden Taylor, 132. Nick Montagna, 126 pounds. Maya Al Ghazwani, 113. Brad Kessler, 152. Austin Mowry, 145. Ben Montagna, 120. Austin Weiderman, 106.